All right, well, the last tune we just did was something from the classical repertoire. And, you know, saxophone really got famous, really got its success from playing in more popular genres of music. Swing, jazz, blues, rock, all those types of music are where saxophone, I think, really gained its, its big prominence in the world of music. So this next tune we're going to work on is called Rockin' the Blues. It's based on the blues. It's based on a 12-bar blues. And I want to talk a little bit about blues before we get into working on the piece. So the blues is a music that developed in the United States, uh, mostly by African American people in the South. Back in the old days, they were singing songs, playing music, and it basically developed into a style of music that's very soulful, very expressive. And this style of music influenced pretty much every style of popular music from then on, after it became known to people. Every type of music, jazz, the blues, rhythm and blues, rock and roll, pop music, all use the blues in, in their music. All use the blues form, use elements of the blues, use things that really come from the blues and make this music really interesting music. So let's go back and work on the blues a little bit. Taking the tune Rockin' the Blues, let's take a look, just like we did on all our other tunes. There's nothing any different about this tune than anything else. We're going to look it over. Let's look and see if there's anything new that we have to deal with before we start trying to play it. Well, we've got, in our first measure, we've got some of those eighth notes that we worked on last time. So we'll be doing that again. And as we keep going, third measure has some eighth notes also. We've got plenty of rests, quarter rests, half rests. Those are all in there. That's good. So we can catch big breaths during those rest times. Measure five, I see a whole string of eighth notes. That's four eighth notes grouped together. When you see four notes grouped like that, those are eighth notes too. Continuing along, everything looks cool. We're all right. We're playing the blues. We're trying to stay cool when we play the blues. Number nine, measure nine. Now there's something we haven't seen yet. Those little, little tiny notes, they're eighth notes, but they're before quarter notes. What does that mean? Well, those things are called grace notes. Grace notes are little embellished notes, embellishments. Kind of like when you have a cake and there's little flowers on the cake. That's what those little notes are. They're not as important as the rest of the cake or even the icing or the frosting, but they actually give a little decoration to the cake. And that's what these notes, these little grace notes do to our main note. They kind of decorate the main note, add a little decoration to our piece. I'm going to demonstrate for you how to play those notes. So you just kind of play them quickly and slide to your main note. It's kind of like a quick slur into your primary big, big note, the big quarter note. So let me play those measures so you can hear those. Measure nine. One, two, three, four. So that was just measure nine. I just play a quick G going to an A. That's how that, that goes. Quick G into A. And I like to play those right on the downbeat, those Gs. There's different ways you can play them, but in this case, it's best to play them on the downbeat. So we have those in measure 9 and measure 10. So I'll play both of those measures so you can hear it again. One, two, three, four. So those are those measures. Now, based on the title of this song, Rockin' the Blues, I would say that this song's probably got a little bit of a rock type of a feel. It's based on the blues, but it's rockin' as well. So that means I'm going to play a little bit stronger. I'm going to play with a little more intensity, a little bit louder than I would if I were playing a classical piece, because this piece has a little more rockin' type of sound to it. So let's start it off from the beginning. Let's take the first two measures and see how they sound. Remember, we're going to play strong. But remember, not so loud that it sounds bad. We always want to sound good. We always want to make our sound sound nice, pleasant to the ear. But we'll play with some strength to it. Here we go. One, two, ready, play. That's the first two measures. Now, the next two measures after that, same thing. 
really repetitive. I don't have to practice those. I've got those. All right, let's look at measure five. Let's try those two measures, measures five and six. One, two, three, four. So those are those two measures, measure five and measure six. Not too hard. All right, now measure seven and eight look the same as the first two sets, the first two phrases, so we don't need to work on that. Let's look at measure nine. Maybe you can try to play it with me this time. So remember, you're playing a quick G to an A. Let's try that. One, two, ready, play. Okay, I think that's pretty good. Now let's try going from that point, measure nine, all the way to the end, because the last two measures are measures that we've already dealt with. We already know how they go, except for the very last note, but that's not a hard note. Now, let me tell you something really quickly about that last note. On top of that note is a thing, sometimes people refer to it as a bird's eye because it looks like a bird's eye. It's called a fermata, which means you hold the note. Now, if there was a conductor, he would tell you when to stop holding that note. You don't have to keep counting and hold it only for two, but you have to hold it most likely longer than two because it's meant to be held out. That's what a fermata does. It's held until whoever's leading the group decides it's time to stop. All right, so let's play those last four measures, and then we'll play the whole song. One, two, three, four. Now you might have noticed I held that last note quite a bit longer than just two counts. So that's up to us to decide when we get there. Now let's play the whole song from the beginning. We'll get through it and you'll be rocking out. Here we go. One, two, three, four. That's rocking the blues.